are inside of Carbide Create. This is just the program that I found that is the easiest and simplest um, for what I need to do. I just never had good luck with 360. Um, it's just way more than I understand or can use right now. Maybe in the future, I'll figure it out. But all you have to do with this is figure out what size your wood is going to be. Now, in this case, it's going to be 24 by 24. Uh, it's quarter inch board, and I just add an extra thousandths on there um, just so that I get a full cut all the way through because uh, I do have tape that you're going to see later, and so I just need to make sure that it gets through all the way. Uh, we want to make sure that the tool path starts in the bottom left, and uh, for MDF, I just choose softwood. I'm not sure that these actually make a difference because we're not using an integrated spindle. We're using the, um, the Makita spindle. So it really doesn't know what you're doing with it. But um, but anyway, that's just what I put it on. It seems to work fine. So now it is creating my 24 inch by 24 inch grid. And I need to bring in some pictures that we need to use. So I have this wood shape file here. And what are his goat? There's our goat. We're going to open this. And then I need to go ahead and trim it out or trace it. So we're just going to hit trace. You can see this red line around it. If the red line doesn't work right, you can change these threshold angles, but this seems to be what works well for me. And boom, there is our goat. And I can uh, now come off of it. If I'm here, I can hit control C, control V, and paste a separate one, and then go into, oops, go over here to the move and move it over here. And we can deal with sizing it in a minute. And then I need to um, make sure, so we're going to go to scale, which is this one, and there's the width, and that's what I want it to be. So that's fine. Um, now this is right on the edge of the wood, and this is right on the edge of the wood. So here's something that I can do to help uh, facilitate this. So I want to move it in just a little bit, and you can see that, that we moved it in just a little bit. Now I'm going to take this one and I'm going to come over here and I'm going to rotate it and I want to rotate this 180 degrees. So now I have an upside down goat and we're done. And now, now you can see that I am able to more effectively use the wood space. And this works really well. I've done this with a bunch of different things um, so that I can, um, you know, kind of Tetris everything in. But this way, there's no issues with running out of wood anywhere. Uh, and I've been really happy with it. And I'm going to bump these up just a hair to get away from the edge. But this shouldn't be a problem cutting it out. And then once we do the trace, we're going to we're going to see here um, if there's any issues. But I do need to go ahead and um, click off of this so that my menu pops back up. And then I'm going to choose butterfly because she needs some butterflies. And we're going to trace this one. And hit OK. And first thing is we're going to move it out of the way so that I can work with it. And then she wants them to be seven inches wide. So we're going to, when you hit the seven and then hit tab, it's going to auto scale the height here. So there's our seven inches. And she wants me to do as many as I can fit on here. So control, oops, click on it, control C, control V. And now I can hit, oops, I always hit the scale one, hit move and come over here and figure out. Now I might find, this is where playing around with it, you gotta kind of figure out what works. So if I come in here, I can possibly move this and let's rotate this one 90 degrees. You got to kind of do a little bit of work um, to figure out the best way to organize this stuff. So I don't know if I love this arrangement, but I'm going to try flipping this 180 to see if it fits any better. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, so see how that sort of puzzle pieces everything in, and I should have enough room. We're going to find out in a minute, but let me get rid of this one. And then I'm going to go ahead and select both of these now, and then Control C, Control V, and that just copies and pastes it for me. And then I can, well, I can at least fit another one over here, and then hit Control V again, and go to move. And then I've got that one set. And let's see if I can squeeze another one in somehow. So 
It looks like I might be able to get it in there. Okay, so now I've got it all laid out. Now what I need to do is highlight all of these. And what I want to do is I want to um, offset the vector so that it is outside of the line. And that is, and the distance is going to be quarter inch because I'm using a quarter inch uh, spindle. So I really want to change this to one two five because I'm going to be switching it out to a um, eighth inch spindle, uh, eighth inch router bit, so that I can get more of the detail. And I want to offset that eighth inch to the outside so that I get a, an exact cut. So now you can see where any of the lines are going to intersect, and it looks like we're going to get pretty clean, pretty clean cut across everything. There's nothing that's going to overlap. The only thing that's close is the goat here and the goat head here. So what I can do is if I click off of this and then I can kind of move this. So I'm actually going to highlight both of these and then move them just a little bit. Yeah, we'll go there because it'll be fine at the bottom right here. Okay. So now we have all of our offsets there. So now we need to designate, we're going to highlight it all. And then we're going to designate a tool path, and it's going to be a ton contour cut. Uh, I have my eighth inch bit in here already, so I'm not even going to touch that. There's there's different tools in here, and, and I honestly don't know enough about this to, to do anything intelligent with it. But um, again, I'm using a, a spindle that has a control on itself, so this doesn't really affect anything uh, that I found. And then selecting this tool, I just find a, it's, an, it's a one eighth. Um, Let's just, I'll show you here. So we'll just go to end mill and then we'll just choose a uh, one, it's a one eighth end mill. So that's fine. Uh, what I do want to change in here on the edit tool though, is I want to make sure the depth per pass is roughly half of the eighth inch. So half of, uh, if we go and do the math, if we do half of uh, 0.125 times 0.5, it's 0 0.0625. So depth per pass is going to be 0625. Now it's going to make the cut take a little longer, but typically you want to do from what I found and learned about half of whatever your spindle diameter is. And again, these, I just changed this. I don't know why. I just makes me feel better, I guess. But um, the feed rate I've stuck with and I've been pretty happy with that. The plunge rate doesn't seem to matter too much with this. So there is, there is that. Um, the max depth should be fine on cutting that out. And then uh, we don't need an offset because I already told it that we're doing an offset. Now, you could technically do the offset here, but I like choosing the outside contour there. Uh, we don't need tabs because I'm using tape. And then what I need to remember is along this 24 inch, I need to have a strip of tape here, a strip of tape here, here, and here. So I'm going to need four strips of tape to hold everything as it's cut. And then we're just going to call that the tool path. So one tool path is going to cut everything because that's all I need. We're going to choose MDF and then I can check simulation to make sure it cuts what I'm expecting. So yeah, that looks exactly what I want. So now we can hide that. Now we need to save the G code and that's what's great about this program. It automatically creates the G code, which is something again, I don't have a slicer program. If I was using Fusion 360, I would have to use a slicer program. So uh, we're just going to um, go in here. I'm going to call it um, butterfly goat and we're going to save it and now it is on my flash drive so uh, let's head out to the shop i will show you how i get this onto the machine how i mount the wood and how we do the cut. first thing we're going to do is come over here and figure out how so you can read this without it being out of focus there we go so we're going to home the machine now it's already up in this front position so it's not going to take much to home, but if it was anywhere else on the table, it would come back. Just need to make sure it's zero, zero, zero. Don't ever worry about the Z. Uh, the Z tool path is always going to be over. That's just the way it works. Uh, I don't know if there's a way to change this. I haven't looked, but um, default is metric. I always want imperial. And uh, at this point, uh, I have plugged in my USB drive to my extension to make my life easy like I've talked about. I need to scroll up and then we're going to choose a file and if you remember we named it Butterfly Goat and we're going to open that. Okay and it's checking to make sure the G code's good. 
And this is going to give us a time estimator. Now, remember, because I'm using a 1 8 bit, it is going to take longer. I'm guessing this would be like an hour cut, something like that. Especially how long it's taking to build the simulation here. Yeah, so a little bit over an hour, so an hour and six minutes. Uh, but, you know, for the for the life of the bit, to get a better cut and everything, uh, I think you can definitely speed it up. If I wasn't doing such detail, I would use my quarter inch bit. It would probably take it to like a 20 minute cut. Uh, but it's important to me that, uh, that I buy good bits. And so far it seems like using the half of the diameter of the cutting bit as a model for how deep to go on each pass seems to be a good uh, a good way to go. Uh, maybe I'll up it in the future, but for now, that's that's what I'm going with. Okay, so there's a couple things I need to do at this point. The first is I need to put our wood on the board. So let me show you how I do that. Uh, the first thing I need to do is turn on my controller here. And if you have one of these for the Onefinity as a lifesaver, I did not realize the importance of this uh until i was without it uh and had to use the keypad to move around everything and, and that's just a pain so once this is showing that it's active i've got a dongle that's down in the controller underneath these control the speed and if you forget here's what i will tell you don't mess with the z don't mess with the z axis when you're trying to determine speed just use the uh the y axis or x axis here so that you know like if i push b it's pretty slow if i go to y it's pretty fast and if i was on uh the z-axis i could end up slamming it one way or the other uh, hang on something's caught up okay so uh i always make sure in case i forget which speed i want to use my x and y to make sure so i'm gonna get this out of the way and i know i'm using a 24 inch square so I'm just getting this good and out of the way. And I, like, I, like I've told you guys in the past, I've tried using the hold down clamps and I am not successful. I have trouble cutting with tabs. I have trouble doing a bunch of this stuff. Um, let me get a sheet of wood here. Okay. So here is my 24 inch piece of wood. Now something I've done is I have put marks to indicate uh, where my cutting surface needs to go so that I don't run out of cutting space uh, left to right as well for 24 inch. So I just know uh, where to put this down. So if I'm not using cutting clamps, what am I doing? Well, as I learned watching other people, and this one took me by surprise, I am using double stick tape. And I apologize for some of the contrast issues. I am in a garage and the sun is directly outside, so it does cause some weird shadows. But, uh, so here we go. So I've got marks along the way for where my 24 inches is, left and right. Um, I do just try to at least make sure there's nothing major in the way that is going to affect me. And I am just going to tear off some two foot rough strips. And I know I need four of these based on the pattern that we were doing. And I'm just going to lay these down. And this has made my life so much easier. Like, ridiculously easy. Um, I hate wasting the tape, I'm not going to lie. But I do not miss using the hold down clamps whatsoever. Now you see I covered up one of the gaps. That's okay. Um, I just need to make sure that I am under all of the butterflies. And so that just helps me make sure that i'm holding down everything now i need to go ahead and pull the top piece here have to have the wood down before uh, before we do any kind of probing because we need to know where the, the front corner is. So this has to be done first. Now if you use hold down clamps, great. I'm glad you can. Uh, it's just 
hasn't been my thing. All right, so there's my double stick tape. I have my piece of wood. Now, remember, it doesn't really matter where this is as long as you're within the cutting area because we're gonna probe it and tell it where we want to be. So I just need to get it close and I need to get it as roughly parallel as possible, which is again, why I have my lines down here. So because I've got these lines measured out uh, parallel, And that ain't going anywhere. So now we need to probe it. I know there are other ways to do the probing. I just took the easy way out and spent the 80 or 90 bucks, whatever it was, and bought the probe, probe block. We're gonna go ahead and stick this. It's cut out underneath so that you just stick it right there. And then uh, I need to bring that back. And what we're trying to do, oh, and I need to change the spindle on this thing. All right, so let's get the eighth inch bit in there. Okay. And I'm using a, an eighth inch bit. Uh, I'm using an eighth inch bit that has a quarter inch shank so that I don't have to switch out the collet inside. If I was doing something thicker and needed more eighth inch bit, I would definitely want to go with a full eighth inch long and then I'd have to change out the collet, but this is the easy way. And again, I'm not a woodworker, so I'm just, you know, for me, sometimes I end up taking shortcuts because I don't know any better. So I'm just doing the best I can with the information I've got. Obviously we wanna make sure that that is nice and tight. All right, now we need to probe that and that's gonna involve bringing it over and on the probing block is a little circle and we need to bring this down so that it is on top of that circle and just barely touching. And um, this is one of those situations where I'm still remembering which one does what so I'm gonna try a and move forward on the X and that is the fine adjustment again I don't want to use the uh, I don't want to use the uh, Y axis to test what speed I'm at now over here there is a button that says probe XYZ attach magnet so thank you for reminding me because I need to attach the magnet down here, it's gonna go right on the spindle uh, on, on where the collet nut is. Uh, and then what we need to do is lower the Z until that turns green. So I am lowering my Z over that circle and at some point it's going to touch and make a, con a, a, mag a uh, electrical connection, basically like a tiny low voltage connection. There we go. So now that it is touched, I'm going to hit continue and it's gonna to wanna to know my, my um, bore size. So that is one, two, five. So now that is set. And now if I come over here, you will see that it's gonna come down and it's gonna basically be testing the sides. And because that magnet is attached, it's actually sending a very, very slight signal through so that it knows when it's touching and then it calculates where the corner of the wood is based on that probing. Like I said, I know there are other ways to do it. I don't know what they are, uh, but this is definitely the easy button and I think it was definitely worth the money for me to never have to worry about it. So there we go. Now it knows where that front corner is and that will match up to uh, where my program inside thinks. So I can put down this controller now and don't don't get you know game controller confused for the controller that's uh, part of the Onefinity system. 
uh, you know, that is a, a different controller. Okay, so I need to remember over here to take my magnet off and remove this, okay? And I'm doing it one-handed, so it's a little tougher, but all I do is leave it hanging with the magnet on one of the nuts here, or one of the bolts, so it's just hanging, and then I put my probe over on my little rolling cart, okay? Now, we just need to make sure that we get before, so yes, we're done, we're good. I don't wanna hit play yet, now I need to come over and I need to make sure, let me bring this down just a little bit for you. Okay, so what I need to do is make sure that I have my socket boot on here. Okay, oh, hang on, I need to raise my, raise my Z axis a little bit. So there's a little cutout in the back that goes over the bit but it's not big enough to go over the collet nut, okay? So now that is set. I need to make sure I plug in my vacuum. And what I've done, and it seems to be working pretty well, is I wanna make sure that that, that vacuum does not come out midstream. So I just take a little bit of my painter's tape and I just tape this down so that it doesn't, you know, sort of friction out the, the setup I have up here, uh, you know, swings around with it, but over time, if you're doing a lot of cutting, it will vibrate out. So I just tape that down. I don't know if that's a good or bad thing, but it works for me. All right, so that is it. Now, I'm not gonna bore you with watching the entire cutout because it's gonna be an hour, and even if I time lapse it, it's going to look horrible. Uh, so I'm gonna get it started. We're gonna stop. I'll bring you guys back in when it's got, you know, a few minutes left and you can see what's going on with it that's turning on the spindle I tend to leave it you know my my Makita goes up to six uh, again I have no reference as to what's good or bad on this but I have it on three which has been indicated to me to be roughly the right spindle speed for uh, most of the cutting that I want to do so the other thing that, that I just uh, I I'm not always the most safety minded, but I will tell you, I wear these and I wear these because this stuff gets loud and an hour's worth of this uh, really starts to wear on your ears. Uh, I do other things in my garage while this is cutting. Uh, that way I can be around it in case I hear something weird or need to periodically check on it. I don't like, I'm not good enough to say that I just want to leave this for an hour and never know what's going on. I'm just not there yet. So I like to be around it in case there's a problem. Uh, before things get worse and uh, so here we go uh, let me get my ears on we're gonna get this fired up and I will at least let it film for a minute while we are going It turns out that when I went to go put the, do the the suck it dust boot on, I forgot to turn the spindle back on. So then when I 
hit play, it pulled the, it was dragging the bit and snapped it. This is ultimately what happened, and you know, this is just part of the learning curve. So there goes a $20 bit. Uh, here's the tip of it. Anyway, uh, I have now run to the store. This is not the normal cutting bit I would get, but I really need to get these cut. So I'll order up a couple more of the other ones I've got, but this will do in the meantime. Uh, I do need to, because I've put a new bit in, I do need to uh, come back over and get a new position on it. So I've stopped the program completely and we're going to come over here and that's because it doesn't know the depth of that bit now. So, let's see. probe again. So now I'm bringing it down until I see green on my screen. Just tiny bits at a time. And I need to put my magnet on so now it says green. Okay. And it's still a 1 8 bit. And then when I get this all set up, I'm just going to hit run again because it's going to go through the same tracing path. So it doesn't really matter. Now, it looks like I need to raise that bit up. It's hitting in the wrong... It's going to get the wrong sensor reading. So it's too fat in the in the shank. I didn't put it up high enough so it thinks it's in a weird place. So let me change that real quick. Not the not the best bit for what I need to do but it'll get the job done today and it'll be a good backup bit to have for the future all right so let's do this again Now it should take the right reading. Oh, it's still coming down. I'm gonna spare you this, I'll be back in a minute. Okay, sorry, I know this is probably painful for people who do this all the time to watch, uh, but you know, this is the reality of learning how to use the machine. So I don't know what's gonna happen here. I've got this thing probed, but I'm not using a proper CNC bit, I'm using a router bit, because it's all I could find today. I don't know if it's gonna cut in the right place or not. The worst thing that happens is one of my cuts isn't right, and everything else should be okay, so. I don't know. We're going to give it a test here. We're going to fire it up. Um, 
I don't know. We'll see what happens. So. Honestly, I stopped the cut. Uh, you know, sometimes things go the way you want. Sometimes they don't. Uh, this one, I I inadvertently, looking at the program, put two out... I don't remember what they're called, but I put an outside cut on it and then put a second outside cut. Or I put a I put an inside cut and an outside cut. It cut the outside first, which is what I wanted. Then it went back and started trimming the inside. So on my butterflies, I already popped a couple but you know my butterflies these things uh the the antenna you know they should be big and and everything so let me pull this off at least i can show you real quick uh you know the double stick tape ends up on here it's not a big deal it pulls right off uh the projects uh and then what i would normally do is just come in here and pull all this waste off of it and, uh, you know, technically I can still use this, so I'll probably break this off. All I have to do is just probe this and I can cut something out of that center so or out of that section. So that's fine. Uh, you know, then I'm left with what I cut and these come up pretty easily. Uh, if they're a little, if they're a little stuck, uh, I have just been able to use a little plastic tool or a flathead screwdriver and I've never had anything damaged so far. This is what the butterflies were supposed to look like. You can see that that's, that's the proper look. Um, they're just a little messy because the sometimes the glue just uh, gets on the drill bit and you end up with a little bit of, of sawdust glue. And uh, it just cleans right off. It takes a second. But uh, these are all messed up. And I didn't, I don't know. I kept thinking it was going to get better and it just didn't. But, I mean, these are just all wasted. They're broken and... You know, it's the way it goes sometimes. Uh, all I have to do is just clean up all of this. And then what I found is 
when I when I have all this stickum, I just use it and kind of roll it around and get all the, the sawdust off of my platform here, off the spoil board. So I can just come in here and kind of clean it up a little bit and kind of scrub with it. And I'll finish that up when I'm off camera here, but you know, stuff happens. It's the game we're in, I guess. And uh, I'm getting better, but I still make mistakes. And hopefully you'll be able to see uh, something that turns out properly uh, on the next video I do. So anyway, thanks for hanging out. And uh, you know, it's the way it goes. Talk to you guys later.